Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's talk about getting clients for your software company. Okay, so today I want to answer a question that came in last week from Eric Joseph, uh, who says, uh, Hi Eric, my name is Eric. Sounds similar. Yeah, but it's spelled differently. A-I-R-E-E-C, which is a badass way to spell it. I think I might start spelling my name that way just for fun. Right? He says, Anyway, I'm a freelance developer and I want to start a software development company. I want to know which came first, the app or the customers? That's a really good question. So which came first, the app or the customers? The app. I mean, I had a few customers before we did our first app, but hardly anything worth doing. So I started Overpass in 2004, and, and sometimes I say it with proud pride, like, you know, I've been around since 2004, but other times I say it with embarrassment because I wanted to do client work and I couldn't get any clients for like a long time. So I set up the company in 2004 because I needed a limited company to do uh, contracting with and I didn't want to just call it like Eric Ruley Enterprises or whatever my initials and I wanted a really cool name and I was this I spent a little bit of time thinking about it and I found the name overpass and and I really liked the name and I, and I set it up and I thought I'm gonna get some clients but start my own thing be, be my own be my own man and everything like that and I did nothing with it. I set up a website. I did the same thing a lot of people do. I set up a website, I got some business cards, and I waited for the phone to ring, which of course it doesn't happen. It's the exact same thing with apps. As a developer, as a techni technician, you think it's all about the product, it's all about the service, we'll set everything up, we'll make everything perfect, and then we don't focus on the marketing, we just expect people will find you, and because you're better than everybody else, they'll go with you. But the truth is they don't even know that you exist and they don't know that the app exists. So this is the problem I had. So I would work a contract and the contract would come to an end. And I remember 2006, I left the contract because I wanted to focus 100% of my time on Overpass. And I went home and I, and I read a bunch of books on sales. I read a bunch of books on cold calling and I made a few calls. I mean, and like, and it was like, I was just so, it was just not my thing. I hated doing sales. I still kind of hate doing sales. And so I, I didn't do anything. So like a year passed and I would work on little projects and, and I did get a few little jobs, but hardly anything worth, not, not worth keeping the money going. But luckily I had enough saved up from contracting my previous contract that I was able to survive. And eventually I went back into corporate life and went back and took on another contract. And I kept doing this for about 10 years, leaving those contracts going back in, leaving those going back in. And I would do a lot of blogging and social media stuff and try to get the word out there and get some no some get people to notice Overpass. But it was kind of just half-ass. I wasn't fully committed to it. And it was a thing that I really wanted to do, but I wasn't, I wasn't fully committed to it. I was, uh, yeah, I would think, oh, I need to learn how this new, software works i need to learn how this new technology works but like we talked about the other day working on those projects that i never finished made me a better developer because i would go into these new contracts and i would have a much higher rate of pay because i learned say c sharp on my own or something like that so that worked really well now the app the first app that we did was 2012 and that came out and that was like the first that was like the first ever thing that I could call my very own. I mean, of all these years of being a software developer where I'm like, I worked on that, I worked on that, and I felt a, a sense of ownership for it, they didn't belong to me. And my first app was like, this is my app on the App Store. And it was just going out there and trying to get people downloading it. And But I was still very timid. So I was working, I was still working a contract but I went from five days a week down to three days a week. They were really good to allow me to do that. And then I started getting a little bit more confidence and more people started contacting me and started thinking, how do I get, not how do I get more noticed? And all the blogging and, and, and the SEO work and everything that we had going on started to pay off a little bit, but it's, it was such a slow process. It's embarrassingly slow how timid I was about the whole thing. I should have been jumping up and down and saying, hey, I'm overpass over here, this is me. 
but but I wasn't. In fact, when I left one of my contracts, I, I left a forwarding email address of my overpass address, and somebody says, "Eric, do you have a company?" <laughs> he was like, "Yes, I have this company, but I don't really, you know." And it was this thing. I had this dream, but I was almost like apologetic about the fact that I had this dream because I didn't want to tell other people about it. And if I could go back, I would just, you know, I would punch my my younger self in the face because I would just snap out of it, be more assertive, get out there and tell people about it. So the, the app started to help because then I started to realize, hey, we could, you know, we could do this and we started building these things. And because I had these own products of my own, it, it gave me a lot more confidence when I went and met with clients because I could say, this is what we worked on. We've done this, we've done this. This is kind of stuff that, that we've done. And it really started to pay off. And then I started doing the videos and the videos helped too because we're always thinking about how do we get out and meet new people. And I'm a very, I'm a very shy and introverted person. I could sit at the computer all day and not talk to anybody, which is, I mean, I've just always been that way, but I'm getting more used to getting out and meeting people and being more personal with people and everything like that. So, yeah, Rick, I know it's kind of a roundabout way to answer the question, but get setting up a software company is easy doing the limited company is easy even hiring developers is easy but getting the clients is going to be something that that's the most important thing and in fact i would even say see if you could get clients first before you set things up just even if you you know just reach out there gauge their interest think how can you appeal to those to those people who your clients going to be what is the niche they're looking into the same thing we would do with an app we think who are the people who are going to be interested in this app what can i do to make them see this app what kind of things would they be searching on on the on the on the web and how can i reach out to them what kind of content can i write to do this what kind of dem demo projects can i make that would make it very interesting for them so and it's always something that you know i'm still working on i'm still we're still bringing in new clients. We're still talking to new people, and but it's it's there's so many developers out there setting up their own companies. They're doing their own thing, and there's only so many clients. So we we have supply and demand, and we're at, well, I think we're getting to the point where we have more supply than we have demand, and then and that gets a bit dangerous. You have to think when that's the case, when there's more develop developers out there than you can swing a stick at then you have to think, how do I stand out from the rest of them? And I think, Eric, that's, that's the, the question to be asking yourself when you set your stuff up. Who are, who are your clients going to be? How do you reach out to them? How do, they make, how do you make them find you? And, and don't just do like I did and, and create some business cards and sit down and wait by the phone, wait for the phone to ring. So hey, I hope that's a little bit helpful. I, I may have talked about some of this stuff before in the past, but it's a, it's a really good topic. And I, you know, I made so many mistakes in this area that I, that I hope none of you guys out there make if you start to do your own company. So anyway, that is it for today. I will talk to you guys again tomorrow. Tomorrow.